What's up everybody, welcome back. My name is Josh and today we're talking about the quick stock market update for my portfolio. For anybody who's watching or has watched the channel, I actually got back into the self-managed brokerage side of things, not my IRAs, back in November and I got the data here. I think it was like November 2nd. So we're gonna talk about some of the updates, some of the things that have changed, what I've learned. Let's go. I'm gonna provide a quick portfolio update, but I'm also gonna share that things really aren't changing too much with the way that I'm investing. And the reason is that there is still things like dollar cost averaging and a saying that time in the market always beats time in the market, right? So jumping past all that stuff into the portfolio, I'm actually gonna pull some of the data that I had and I had to pull this. Remember, I use Vanguard. I do use Robinhood as a quick update on doing my calls and puts and the reason for that is because Robinhood actually updates a lot faster than Vanguard and again Vanguard is probably just not used for day trading. And in a sense, it's not really day trading but options do need to be pretty up to date if you want to actually get a, an executed option contract as fast as possible. Back in November of 2020, November 2nd actually is when I started putting money in and I actually by the end of November had placed about $30,000 that was over the month of November and then by the end of December I had put in another $15,209 to bring up the total to $45,209. So stepping into 2021 I had $45,209 in the self-managed brokerage to get this started restart looking in here. Now what I mentioned in the video prior is that I did do a lot of research this time. I spent much more time looking at what stocks I wanted to get into, what ETFs and mutual funds I wanted to get into. I spent a little more time and that's because I really screwed up the first time. And so spent some more education on tracking this stuff. I think lowered the amount of stocks that I had, individual stocks that I had so I could actually pay attention to what I was getting. And I made a plan on what were the big things that I was looking for in terms of a stock, an ETF, mutual fund, that kind of thing. And then how much I was gonna spend and continue to events invest every single month, which ended up being about $1,200 a month. It was my, my, my true goal. Now I did have the first quarter, maybe Q2 of 2021. I spent a little more than that because I was getting into VOO and I was, I was kind of like building out the position a little more. By, by putting more than $1,200, I mean taking that $45,000 and actually spreading it into stocks. So there's actual funding the brokerage or settlement fund, right? And then there's actually purchasing the stocks, ETFs and mutual funds. So I spent a little more money doing that that first quarter in before getting into the regular $276 a week, which adds up to $1,200 a month. I also, which I mentioned in another video, tried to do some of this with my emergency fund. So I dumped a little more money in and planned to use this for some of the more stable emergency fund, I still have cash on hand. I don't necessarily recommend that for everybody. It's something I'm doing for some of my cash. And that's only because there's more of a return in the stock market and I don't really need that money outside of the, the real true emergency fund that I have. What I was putting that $1,200 into was a couple of different stocks, J&J, &J, uh, VGSLX, and then VYM, which is Vanguard's high yield. ETF, and so I was purchasing on Mondays uh, about two shares of whatever that stock was. In this case, it was an ETF, so VYM, and then J&J &J earlier in the year. And then I even purchased a couple shares of ABV, ABBV, and I would dump whatever I had left into the mutual fund of my choice. So that was at one point VTSAX, and then now it's regularly VGSLX. I say at one point because I did have the total stock market mutual fund and I know a lot of people on YouTube and a lot of investors are all about that, but I already had VTI, which is the total stock market, it, the ETF version of that in my IRA. And so I, I felt like I was kind of getting about the same with VOO, which if you really look, if you track VTSAX and then VOO at this time, it's a it's about the same. So I kind of got a little more exposure there. I can always reevaluate that, but at this point, I just I, I felt that 
HBO as a better play. I also spent a little more money on some of the riskier plays, some of the growth stocks that we're thinking about, ones that I'm paying attention to. Uh, that includes Lucid, CCIV at one point, and that's some of the option plays that I have. Open Door, which I am bullish on the real estate sector, so interesting to see some kind of innovation there. And then also ASTS, which is uh, uh, Space Mobile at this point. So to the actual numbers that we're sitting at, and both on stock, and I'm gonna dive into some of the dividends and then also the options revenue for myself. So total right now is $63,318.42. I'm up right now on VGSLX, VYM, VOO, VPU, ABBV, which is at V, AAPL, which is Apple, JNJ, PG. Those are my stocks, ETFs, and one mutual fund that's up. The stocks that are down for me right now, AT&T, Metro Mile, Open Door, and then ASTS. So Open Door, I'm actually down quite a bit on. I think overall, I'd have to look at the numbers, but I think uh, my unrealized losses are at I think 500 bucks, whereas some of the stocks and ETFs that I'm up on uh, individually, the unrealized gains are pretty high. So it, that just represents the, the riskier plays right now. I haven't sold out of anything, and that's also because I'm doing some of those option plays on those. So dividends I've got so far are $608, and this was done on August 1st, so basically Q2, Q1 of 2021. Uh, I've got $759 in total options revenue. And that's a fun little story because I've actually reached $1,000, got a little confidence and, and cocky and started doing some crazy puts that, and I didn't really understand things like the Greeks, like Delta and Theta and how that impacts everything and lost a lot and then came back up to about $759. I actually track all this in a different stock market sheet as well. Uh, Lucid or CCIV, the EV company has been the highest so far and I'm actually up uh, $1,100, uh, $1,185 in option revenues from uh, Lucid and that's one that I've been doing the wheel strategy on in the money does a really good job at walking through that and Andre Jick has also explained what the wheel strategy is. So a couple of things that I've learned so far, one of which is you, you really don't wanna to try to time the market. It's, it's really about finding a strategy for both for the stock market, and individual stocks, ETFs, mutual funds, what I've done is essentially just done my research, it kept it with the actual numbers, and eventually the market catches up to those, those numbers, what the company's actually worth. On the other hand, there's the option strategy where you, you can't really completely guess, and it is kind of a gamble at the end of the day, but if you're, you're looking at how much a an options contract will actually change to so the delta per every dollar of value change in the stock price and really starting to understand what you're trying to do there and not just risking it. Again, some of those blue chip stocks or growth stocks or stuff that's really volatile like Open Door and Lucid, CCIV, just more than like a week ago, then you can probably make a decent amount of premium, but definitely something to pay attention to and actually have some kind of strategy versus just Godspeed. Let's let's hope it works, and that's that's something that I've I think not only learned, but maybe maybe even relearned because I kind of understood that stepping into this again for the second time. Second big thing it ha ties to options, and that's just keeping your mind open. And at the beginning of this year, I was educated on options, so I think I only started in February or March before actual calls and puts, and that was because I always thought it was the riskiest thing that I could do. And to be very honest with you, there is a little bit of a gamble chance there, but things like a covered call, the, the greatest risk that you have is realizing some short-term capital gains and missing out on additional profit post that strike price. So at the end of the day, you are basically making income on the stock that you already own. And then there's all kinds of strategies like the real the wheel strategy where you actually purchase or sell a put and then end up selling covered calls if you actually get assigned on that put. So there's a lot of other ways to actually earn money in the stock market if you're paying attention and you're open-minded to learning. Number three here is that you actually do have to take the time and learn. And that's something that I am trying to stick up, stay up to date on Seeking Alpha. I do watch YouTube. I try to pay attention to, especially my portfolio, and even have a watch list on other things that I wanna get into. Right now, I haven't really expanded outside of those individual stocks that I mentioned. I did get into AT&T and uh, Procter and & Gamble and Johnson & Johnson pretty early on, so around the December mark. 
Apple, AbV, and then I believe VGSA, L SLX uh, were some additions as I started to grow. And then so was Metro Mile and ASTS once I got into the options play. So I did kind of expand a little bit, but I was doing research on what was going on and was really paying attention to the rest of my portfolio and trying to stay a little diversified, but also something that I could stay up to date and research on. Now the plan moving forward for the rest of this year, I will touch on the real estate aspect here. I think I'm getting a little exposure in the VGSLX, even though I do have rental properties as well. I want to continue to, to monitor that and that's going to be something I will do a video on as well because there's plenty of news there and updates to share. I also want to continue to dollar cost average into both VYM, VGSLX and then uh, I'm going to go in, I'm going ahead and select a couple of different stocks on here that I will continue to dollar cost average into because I'd like to get to 100 shares on some of these other ones as well so that I could start to do some type of covered call without having to do the wheel strategy, right? I will continue to do options here. Yeah, I'm pretty satisfied with some of these options plays that I've done and I'll really start to expand on the wheel strategy. I will continue to learn the Greeks and get a better understanding of that and maybe some better understanding of the underlying data on some of these individual stocks, which will give me uh, just more ammo to utilize when I'm doing these option plays. I'd like to see an overall revenue of about $2,000, maybe $2,500 in options revenue for this first year. I know that's probably small beans to some people, but you gotta realize that you, you, you gotta play with capital here at the end of the day, and I'm being kind of careful with my capital there. So if that seems pretty interesting to you, and I'll just do the math real quick, if you talk about $2,500 divided by 12 months, it's 208 bucks a month in options revenue, and it's it's pretty limited. I think I've played maybe with three or $4,000 that has gone back into my settlement fund and then dumped back into buying calls and selling puts and that kind of thing. Because selling a put, you will have some kind of collateral. And yes, you can do a margin account, but that's just not something I wanna do. I'd like to see myself at about $1,200 in terms of dividend revenue. I'm at 608 right now. I think that's very realistic, especially if I continue to add to the portfolio and continue in events. I'll probably be a little higher than that, but for now, that's the 608 or the $1,200 that I'm looking for. Another point I want to bring up is the options revenue there, and this is just a small little bonus piece here is that somebody did comment on the video and mention QYLD, which is actually a covered call ETF. And I did do a little bit of research. I dove in a little bit more on the, the differences. I looked at that about a year ago when, well, eight months ago when I got back into the market and I thought it was amazing because there is like 11% yield. But the thing is, is that you, you might actually be more uh, revenue positive and actually see more of a return on doing options yourself, covered calls. Now, I could see QILD being a really good income source for somebody that's retired. And the only reason is there's there's not a lot of capital appreciation to the actual share price. It's, it's just the actual payout. There is also a great article on Seeking Alpha that I couldn't actually find before this video, but so I'll continue to do some more research on QILD. Don't know if I'm ready to do an actual video on that just yet, but I'm pretty happy with understanding the options myself and doing those on my own portfolio versus having an ETF providing that. And I, I would I would be challenged to say that you could probably do better than that covered call ETF if you actually understand options yourself. Again, that's the way that I look at it because I like to actually dig into that, that kind of thing and understand what I'm, I'm purchasing. And I think that makes it a little easier if um, you have a good idea of, of options before getting into a cover call ETF. And I think people that do options on their own can actually see the difference in doing options on their own versus getting into a covered call ETF. That's all I got for you guys today. If you like the video, go ahead and press like. If you like this kind of content updates, go ahead and press subscribe and come back to the channel. If you got any questions, comments, go ahead and leave one below. I hope you guys have an excellent rest of your, I think it's Friday, Friday and uh, enjoy the weekend. Talk to you soon.